As the deadly coronavirus continues to rip through the world, reports have emerged of pets being unnecessarily abandoned and sometimes even killed. This is mostly the result of overconcerned pet owners that misinterpreted news headlines regarding household pets that tested positive for COVID-19. Hey guys, Dr. Peter. I am a veterinarian from South Africa and today I am going to bust all the myths and provide you with the truth behind COVID-19 and your pets, backed purely by the most up-to-date scientific information that is available. And at the end, I'm going to give you a couple of pointers on how you can protect both your family and your pets during this difficult time. This is a really challenging time that we are living in, and it is understandable that parents would go to the extremes to protect their families. But it's also sad to see that some people will react drastically to exaggerated statements made on the internet by the media. Animals are too often the victims without a voice. And as a veterinarian, it is my duty to speak up and educate pet owners on subjects that can potentially save the lives of thousands of innocent pets around the world. Now, I've done some extensive research on the subject the past couple of weeks, but I failed to find a single video that can fully describe the effects of COVID-19 on your pets in enough detail to really understand the impact it has on the pet society in the world. So, let's jump right into it. COVID-19 is a novel virus, which means it had not previously been recorded. Research is therefore still very limited and ongoing studies will eventually reveal more information regarding the virus and the impact it has on its hosts. From what we do know is that COVID-19 is part of the family of coronaviruses, which consists of different subgroups that can be found in different species, including humans, dogs, cats, livestock, and even wildlife. These coronaviruses tend to be species specific though, which means that one specific strain in general can only affect one specific species. Now, in order to understand how COVID-19 can affect your pets, you first need to understand the difference between a couple of terms that are often used interchangeably on the news and therefore often mistaken for one another. Communicable versus non-communicable. According to dictionary.com, non-communicable diseases cannot be transmitted by direct contact with an infected person, but is rather caused by various environmental, physiological, behavioral and genetic factors. Examples of these are Alzheimer's, diabetes, cancer, and even hypertension. In contrast, a communicable disease, also known as a transmissible disease, can be spread from one organism to another. For example, from one infected person to another infected person, or from an animal to a human, in the case of a zoonotic disease. So, in essence, a communicable disease can be spread but the way in which it spreads depends on whether it's contagious or infectious. Now, infectious diseases are caused by pathogenic microbial agents such as viruses and bacteria. And in simple terms, an infection occurs when bad germs get into your body, spreads and make you sick by altering the way that your body normally works. And examples of infectious diseases include stuff like chickenpox, malaria, Ebola, STDs, and of course, COVID-19. Now, infectious diseases can be spread in a variety of different ways, including by means of direct bodily contact with an infected person, animal, or their discharges, such as saliva, blood, urine, feces, or respiratory droplets, direct contact with a contaminated object, contaminated food or water, or simply by means of disease-carrying insects. For example, malaria is an infectious disease caused by a parasite that is transmitted by means of a mosquito bite, but it's not contagious because you can't get it by simply being in direct contact with someone who has malaria. And tetanus is also an infectious disease caused by a bacteria that enters your bloodstream when you step on a rusty nail, for example, but it's not contagious because 
you can't get it by simply shaking hands with someone who has the infection. Now, let's apply everything we've learned so far to the coronaviruses. We know that COVID-19 is a disease caused by an infection that can easily be spread by means of direct contact with an infected person, object or droplets. So, we can make the conclusion that COVID-19 is an infectious, contagious, communicable disease. So, how does all of this relate to COVID-19 and your pets? From all the research conducted to date on COVID-19 specifically, and I'll be going into a bit more depth on that in a minute, there is no evidence that either dogs or cats can become infectious with the virus. What can happen though, is they can act as a fomite, which means that they can become contaminated when in direct contact with an infected person or object, for example, by means of leaking, or through the environment when walking in an area that was previously contaminated with COVID-19 by another infected person. They can then transmit these virus molecules to other people, objects or surfaces by means of direct body contact, um, given that the virus was able to stay alive for long enough. Now, in dogs, cats and ferrets, the cells that line the respiratory tract have a similar type of protein called an ACE2 protein on them as humans. So when they inhale the infected respiratory droplets, the virus can then attach to these proteins making it detectable by screening tests used for COVID-19. This virus, however, cannot replicate inside the body and therefore dies off after a certain period of time. Now, you are probably wondering why there are so many reports on the news of animals being tested positive for COVID-19. Now, the way that scientists test COVID-19 in animals is very similar to the way they test in humans. There are basically three methods. Number one is a PCR test, which detects the fragments of the virus's RNA, which is basically genetic information in nasal and oropharyngeal swabs. Now, if an animal inhales the COVID-19 respiratory droplets, it will test weak positive on PCR, which then detects if the virus is present or not. But if there's no persistent infection, the subsequent PCR tests will be negative because of the virus's inability to survive inside its host, which is most often the case with pets. Number two is the antibody or serology test, where they use blood samples to detect if there are any antibodies that your body made to fight off the virus, meaning that your body was able to generate an immune response to get rid of the virus. Number three is virus isolation, where they detect if the virus in the samples collected can survive and replicate under ideal environmental conditions. According to the AVMA, there have been labs evaluating thousands of samples from dogs and cats from all around the world, and they have not found a single positive test. In the isolated incidents where animals did test positive on the news, there is not a lot of information made available with regards to the testing procedures, how well controlled it was, or the environment. The first confirmed reports of animals being infected with COVID-19 came from Hong Kong, where two dogs and one cat had tested positive for COVID-19 by means of PCR, serology, and virus isolation. But none of these animals, together with several others who were quarantined at the time, developed any clinical signs of respiratory disease and all of them who tested positive were released from quarantine after 14 days and two consecutive negative PCR tests. Several other instances of animals being tested positive for COVID-19 were also later on reported, including pets from New York, North Carolina, Spain, France, Germany, Belgium, the Netherlands and Russia. In each of these cases, the pets were either living in very close proximity with someone who already was infected with COVID-19 or they were living in a densely populated area that had a high number of COVID-19 infected humans.
COVID-19 was also detected in other species. Five tigers and three lions who lived in a very close proximity at the Bronx Zoo in New York started developing clinical signs of mild respiratory disease in early April 2020. The source of infection, though, was presumed to be due to transmission from the zookeeper, who, at the time, was asymptomatic. Fortunately, these large cats are recovering well. So, to summarize, there is no conclusive evidence that under natural conditions, domesticated animals, including those kept as pets, such as dogs, cats, hamsters, and even ferrets, can be readily infected with or transmit COVID-19. However, many additional studies are underway to better understand the transmission dynamics and pathogenic mechanisms of this virus, with the results of multiple studies being posted and published online on almost a daily basis. Now, there are other coronaviruses that dogs and cats are infectious to, but these generally result in gastrointestinal problems and not respiratory diseases, and they are definitely not able to cause disease in humans. Now, it's important to note that there are canine coronavirus vaccines commercially available, but these are intended to protect against the enteric coronavirus infection in dogs and are not licensed for protection against respiratory infections, which basically means that the vaccine will offer no cross protection against the infection caused by COVID-19, since the enteric and respiratory viruses are distinctly different variants of the coronaviruses. On an interesting note, there are many studies underway to detect whether or not dogs are able to sniff out COVID-19 in humans, even before they show any symptoms. And it's kind of similar to the way they've been trained to sniff out and detect explosives and even diseases such as Parkinson's, malaria and colon cancer. Now several countries are examining different human samples, with the French investigating sweat, the Finnish urine, the British uh, face masks and nylon socks, and the Americans urine and saliva. Now these studies have not published any approved results yet, but it will definitely be an exciting breakthrough if they succeed. And for those of you who are concerned about the dogs getting infected whilst performing these studies, they have assured the public that they are applying all the necessary precautions to prevent this from happening. So, what should you do with your pets during this difficult time? Now, the American Veterinary Medical Association, the US Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and the World Organization for Animal Health have all agreed on the following recommendations. Number one, pet owners who are not ill with COVID-19 should continue to practice good hygiene standards when interacting with animals, which includes washing your hands before and after touching animals, as well as when handling animal food, waste or supplies. Number two, do not allow your pets to come into contact with other people or animals outside of the household for the time being. Number three, keep your cats indoors wherever possible in order to prevent them from coming into contact with other people or animals. Number four, walk your dogs on a leash, maintaining at least six feet or two meters apart from other people or animals and avoid dog parks or public places where lots of people and animals tend to gather. Number five, those ill with COVID-19 should restrict contact with pets and other animals, the same as you restrict contact with other people. Have another member of the household, a friend or a business associate take care of feeding your pets. And if you have no other options, then make sure to wear a cloth face mask, wash your hands thoroughly before and after handling your animals and do not share any kisses, hugs or food. Number six. Routine testing for COVID-19 in animals is not recommended at this stage. Number seven, there's absolutely no reason to put a face mask on your dog. Dogs don't sweat like you and me. They have far fewer sweat glands than humans and thus uses their tongue to cool down. So wearing a face mask is extremely uncomfortable because they're unable to regulate their body temperature adequately. I hope that the evidence in this video has convinced you there's absolutely no reason to remove pets from homes, 
even if COVID-19 has been detected in a member of your household. Unless, of course, there is a risk that the pet itself cannot be cared for appropriately. Animals are too often the victims without a voice. And during this pandemic emergency, animals and people need the support of each other. And veterinarians such as myself are there to ensure the good health of both. Thank you for watching this video. And if you found the information to be helpful, make sure to share it with your friends and family. And if you are new to my YouTube channel, consider subscribing as I'll be posting new videos on interesting pet related topics every week. As always, have a lacquer day and I'll see you again next week in another video. Cheers. This is a really challenging time. This is a really challenging... Now, now, now. In order to understand, according to dictionary.com, non-communicable diseases um, cannot be... Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for... Thank you for watching this video.